Well, hello there and welcome to our seventh video in our Project Plus uh, dive. So this one is, once again, the domain project management concepts, 33%. We're doing bullet point 1.7, compare and contrast quality management concepts and performance management concepts. These are taken right from the CompTIA exam objectives. We're gonna link this down below. So if we come up here, this is the PK0-05. We're still on domain one, which is 33%. And we're on 1.7 right here. Let's go. So looking at this, uh, quality and performance management concepts. So we need to look back on how we did things retrospectively. We need to learn about how to do them better. And uh, this is used in agile methodologies, and we use it in a lot of other areas as well. Um, if we don't learn from our mistakes, we're bound to repeat them, right? Uh, in a sprint review, this is an agile meeting where the team showcases what they've done um, with stakeholders at the end of a sprint. Then we have service level agreements. SLAs. So an SLA is a contract between a service provider and a client that specifies what should happen when, how quickly, um, the level of service. It helps set a measure for performance, targets, right, um, that help ensure accountability and set expectations. Key performance indicators and objectives and key results. So key performance indicators are metrics that evaluate the success of an organizational project in achieving a specific objective. So um, they are very precise and measurable, right? Where objectives and key results is kind of a way of measuring results uh, needed uh, the results needed to achieve uh, certain objectives. So uh, I think of keep keep uh, key performance indicators. Um, at, so let's talk about coding. Lines of code written. That's could be a key performance indicator. Where the objective or the key result is. Um, the client is happy about what's been delivered. Um, so you'd have to survey that over time. Uh, so cost and schedule performance. So we have cost variance. So the difference between what we thought it would cost, what we budgeted uh, of the work performed and the actual cost. So this is a difference, the variance. And then there's the schedule variance, the difference between the planned progress, what you were expected to have done, uh, completed, and what was actually completed. So there's a difference, there's a variance. So continuing on quality and performance management concepts, we have audits and inspections, right? So audit is where we evaluate uh, and determine if our project is complying with our policies that or the organization has, our policies, processes, and procedures. Um, inspection is when we examine specific deliverables and the processes to detect defects. Okay. Um, test plan and tests, testing cycles. So uh, we need to document our outlining strategy, the scope, and the schedule, uh, how we plan on doing things. Uh, and you have a, a life cycle of those, so ways of validating it too. Uh, there's different types. So unit testing is when we test individual components um, to make sure that it functions in its own little unit in isolation. Where smoke testing, it's a test to just check basic functionality. Uh, some of the most crucial things to see if they'll work without major failures, right? Uh, regression testing is rerunning previous tests 
to make sure that your most recent changes don't affect something that you didn't expect it to, to. So with regression testing, we might change something and not realize that it affects something else. So if you just run everything and check. Stress testing, Evalu evaluating how a system will perform under extreme conditions. So maybe it's really high user traffic. Maybe it's uh, hardware is being used heavily on other things and to see how it affects it. Uh, one of the biggest things that's caused problems with uh, my systems in the past has been backups. The amount of, of resources that it requires to do backups will screech a lot of other things to a halt. So you, ha you need to make sure that you're doing backups in a way that it, it doesn't affect things so much. And, but that's a great time to do some stress testing. How uh, is my system performing at this time? And if we add a little bit more, is it going to topple over? Um, performance testing is um, trying to see how responsive and stable it is. Uh, and if is it responding normally when it's under a large number of workload, a large amount of workload. So I've used a lot of different uh, applications to do performance testing. Uh, Roadrunner, I think, was one of them. I've even used plugins to browsers. Um, I can't remember what the, what they were called. Um, that would just uh, iMacros was one of them. Uh, Loadrunner, iMacros. There's a lot of others um, to do testing, and they can be used for performance or stress testing or regressive testing. Um, User acceptance testing. This is the final phase where you actually have people testing the system to ensure that it's working up to spec and meets the real world scenarios. Um, then you have to verify and validate. So verification and validating. So verifying that everything has been uh, produced accordingly and determine whether it meets the actual requirements and um, validating the final product to ensure that it it meets the business needs. Uh, and then post-implementation support. Uh, you need to uh, provide an, uh, support for after it goes live, uh, making sure that there's any problems uh, they can be addressed because nothing's perfect. So I want to tell just a really quick story about uh, user acceptance testing. So uh, I worked on projects that would last sometimes years. Um, and I remember one, this one took uh, probably, I think it was a four, five, six month project. And uh, we would have people testing their um, stuff throughout. And we had multiple test passes to production to make sure that everything was good to go. And then we got ready to do our final move to production. Our final move for production, it takes multiple days. Um, and so uh, the end of it, we have the functional people coming in and doing the user acceptor, user acceptance testing before it's finally released to everyone else. And during that testing, user acceptance testing, uh, on one of the projects that I was on, uh, we had a user say, um, sorry, this doesn't work, you can't go live. Um, and uh, so they came to me and they said, hey, this is what's going on, uh, what, uh, can we roll back? And I looked at them, I'm like, wait a second, uh, let's ask a few questions first. Um, you validated, because they told me they validated this has been a problem the whole time. I'm like, why didn't we catch it earlier? They weren't testing it earlier. I'm like, so you're, what you're saying is we have a user that, that signed off on all the others, and there's now a problem in production, um, that, that our pre-production, and they want us to roll back and redo all this work because they didn't do some work. And I said... Do we have alternatives? Uh, I said, because as, as I'm looking at this, this looks like a small issue, very small issue, uh, that should be able to be fixed in a couple days, maybe a week, um, and it's not needed by then. Can we go live, realizing that they caused part of the problem by not testing it, not catching it earlier, and we fix it after the fact? So he took that back to the project meeting, um, and the answer was yes. Uh, so if we would have rolled back, that would, we would have had to find the next available date to do it, which could have put us off 
at least a couple weeks and maybe more and everyone would have had to spend all that extra time another weekend to go live um that was that would have been a very expensive um a very expensive uh user acceptance testing story gone awry um okay so that is the end of 1.7 i hope you've enjoyed this and we'll see you in the next video hopefully 1.8 have a good day